In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you some hand positions for the ocarina that's going to make playing much easier for you, so stay tuned. Back with me goes, I'm David, and I wanted to show you some techniques and positions with the ocarina that's going to greatly improve the speed that you're playing at, how comfortable it is to hold the ocarina mid-performance, and uh, a couple other suggestions. But before we get to those, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know whenever I post a new tutorial, review, or music video, you definitely don't want to miss those. So one of the most common mistakes I see with beginner ocarinas is that they tend to hold the ocarina like this, some people can actually play like this. Kudos to you, this seems very, very difficult. But how you actually hold the 12 hole ocarina is that you place the ocarina's smallest portion, the nose I like to call it, facing downward. And you place one hand, your left hand on this side, and then your right hand on this side. And then you place one hole on every finger and turn it like this. So your left hand's gonna be on the bottom and your right hand's gonna be on the top much more comfortable. The other common problem I hear from a lot of people is how to hold the ocarina properly on the high notes. Again, it's a ceramic instrument, so you don't wanna drop this and you wanna make sure that it's as secure as possible. So I wanna introduce support fingers. Basically, whenever you're lifting your fingers off the ocarina, you wanna place them in a position that's going to prepare you to play those high notes. So starting with the right support fingers, basically what you wanna do, once you play up to the G note, you can start positioning this hand and like this, using two fingers, your ring finger or your pinky, to grasp the nose of it like this. And it's gonna give you a lot more balance. I like to use the pinky mainly because it's less repositioning. So I can go like this and back again, just kind of dipping my pinky down. It's very natural, it's just already there. So you can use your pinky as your right support finger. When you get up to the high C, I like to just move my left index and my left thumb over to this near the butt of the ocarina, or the capello. So you can see I'm already resting it there to give me that counterbalance to my right pinky. Okay, now here is where it gets a little bit more tricky. With the thumbs, you have to remove those left, right, and then your left pinky. So what I like to do is I like to just move it out of the way. Sometimes I might move it completely off the hole, but what's even better for playing those high notes is just scooting it over to the left. And the same with the right finger. You can either move it out of the way, just sliding it, or you can rock it. You can pivot on this portion of your thumb. And what I like about that pivot is that you're still supporting it while moving it out of the way. And you want to be careful not to shade that hole, not to cover it partially because it's going to affect how the pitch comes out. Now, if you position all your fingers correctly with the right support finger on the, on the tip of the ocarina here, your left support finger is here like this, and then you can move that thumb out of the way, then you're not going to have a problem lifting that left pinky because everything else is already counterbalancing it. It's gonna make it much easier to balance and not drop accidentally when you play those high notes and then also bring them back to the starting position whenever you need to. And the final suggestion I have for today's video is watching the distance you keep between the fingers that are raised above the tone holes because if you lift up your fingers like this, this is another problem I see with a lot of beginners, is you have a lot more distance to travel when you're going back down. And having that wailing, those wailing fingers uh, just makes it a lot more cumbersome when you're trying to play quick passages of music. So I like to keep my fingers no more than an inch above those tone holes so that way it can come back down easier and faster.
That's going to do it for this video. I hope you found those tips and suggestions helpful. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about ocarina technique, my new book, How to Play Ocarina, is available now for download. It's full of exercises, ocarina techniques, music theory, things that are going to really help you in your ocarina journey. And it's available for download now at davidericramos.com slash store. The physical book is currently on back order. So if you want to grab a physical copy, be sure to sign up for my newsletter so you get a notification whenever those are available. If you have any questions or suggestions for other tutorials, I'd love it if you left those in the comments down below. Give this video a like if you found it helpful and a very special thank you to my patrons for making these videos possible. If you'd like to help support these videos as well, check out patreon.com slash docjazz4 where you can get a lot of different rewards, backtracks, sheet music, mp3s, and also one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons to help you improve in your ocarina journey. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next Tuesday.